prepare for the meeting, prepare for the conversation, prepare for the fight. It is often believed that one can take the mediation out of the dispute, but one cannot take the dispute out of the mediation, right? Well, yes. not always. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Ananya Agarwal. I'm the founder, editor-in-chief and host at Excuria International, a global dispute resolution platform. Today we explore how a deal-making process also stands to gain immense benefits by engaging a mediator even where no pre-existing dispute exists. Strange, right? But not really. In partnership with NLU Jodhpur Deal Mediation Competition 2.0, we have with us today Mr. Claude Amar, here to answer some pressing and pertinent questions about deal mediation. Mr. Amar serves on the ECI International Advisory Board. He is also the founding partner of Mediation and Resolution, a leading dispute resolution firm in France. Mr. Amar, a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Same here. Well, let's get cracking. And to start with the very basics, can mediation even exist without a dispute, Mr. Amar? Yes. Yes. Well, just think of a potential dispute. Uh, newborn partnership can lead to success or can lead to dispute, who can lead to success and dispute, or dispute and success, or dispute and failure. Uh, why is it that mainly in the United States today, nobody gets wed without a prenup agreement? And what is the difference between a prenup agreement and deal mediation? This is probably what we're going to talk about. Very interesting. What does a mediator have to offer in a deal making process? Well, let, let's, let's start with the beginning. Why is deal mediation necessary? Because, and let's concentrate probably on partnerships. Two people who are successful wants to join forces to increase their reach uh, with a common uh, company. Uh, the two of them have more or less the same age, more or less the same length of education, and uh, also the same success in their respective business. So they want a 50-50 partnership, a 50-50 joint venture. But they get together because they look at the future and they're very enthusiastic and they're very excited and they're very prolific about what the future is and they forget to question their respective past. And that's where the dispute will grow because everything will work well until they have to make a difficult decision. And that difficult decision will be based on their present experience as well on their past experience. These two guys have forgotten, excuse me, investigate each other's culture, experience, past, until the day they got together. The deal mediator will assist them at the time of creating the partnership in investigating everything that they do not talk about. Uh, it happened in real life with a potential partnership in between one, uh, two of the largest advertising companies in the world, where both CEOs wanted to be the number one. They decided to merge their two companies. They spent two years organizing their um, company, their, their, their forthcoming company worldwide. We will close this office. We will use yours here. We will use mine there. Uh, and they have spent two years they have spent a lot of money with lawyers, accounting firms, consultants. And when the day come to sign the agreement, well, the most important question was not asked, which one of the two will be the CEO? If I, the deal mediator, would have been in the room on day one, I, wouldn't, I would not have left them outside of the room without making that decision. I'm not saying one should be the CEO or the other. But to think about governance and how these two big egos will live together forward. Uh, another example, coming back to what I said in the beginning, a 50-50 partnership. There, today, there's only one way to resolve uh, the dispute in case of a deadlock, and that's what we call the Texas shotgun. Are you familiar with Texas shotgun, Ananya? I have heard about this before, yes. 
uh, well, basically, uh, the two partners want to retain the company, so they put an offer in a sealed envelope, and the highest offer get, gets the company. Well, there's a second uh, possibility, much softer and much more promising in terms of future, which is to, that each partner will give half a percent to a deal mediator who will, who will be a board member. And in case of a deadlock, the mediator with his 1% will make the decision. Uh, basically, that's what deal mediation is about. Yeah. And the other side, this is at the beginning, going forward in, in the current exercise of the joint venture of the company, whatever the deal mediator is associated with, uh, he can listen and he will hear what the others do not hear and bring back the subject on that stone that was left unturned on the path. Mr. Amar, that's a very interesting insight, but I must play a devil's advocate over here and also ask you, what are the risks associated with deal mediation? I'm a good salesman, none. <laughs> I cannot think of one except, of course, if down the line, uh, the, 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 the people cannot stand each other. But that's, uh, th that, that happens everywhere, every company, every position in the company. So I would not qualify this as a risk for deal mediation. I don't think there's a risk of losing time. To the contrary, uh, things get executed faster. And, and don't forget that in the case of these two partners, we're dealing with two intelligent people who will probably go back to the negotiation table rather than having a third making a decision for them. Right. So risk-wise, zero. Well, that's, that's positive to hear then. Um, this is a question for all law students uh, who aim to become mediators and more specifically legal mediators in their career. What are the important characteristics for a deal mediator to imbibe? Empathy, active listening, active listening, active listening, and above all, preparation. Prepare for the meeting, prepare for the conversation, prepare for the fight. I would think that the toolbox of the deal mediator are the same as the mediator. Preparation and active listening and empathy. Maybe a little bit of a sense of humor. I think that's very important. I have to break the ice somewhere. <laughs> well... To wrap up this very interesting session with you, Mr. Amar, what is the way forward for deal mediation? And do you have a message for all of the students participating in this competition and in deal mediations in real life? Uh, well, first of all, read again and again, getting to yes, the Bible. Uh, be prepared. Listen. Listen. It's not a coincidence that Mother Nature has given us two ears and one mouth. What does it tell you? You should listen twice as much as you speak. Silence is not dangerous. So whether you are a mediator or a deal mediator, listen, analyze, rephrase, check the understanding on both sides of the table and be prepared for the unknown. I have listened to what you have said and I hope everybody watching this video has too. Thank you ever so much. We covered things like the relevance of a mediator in deal negotiations, the pros and cons and the future of mediation beyond just dispute resolution. Do check out our website to know more about the facilities we can provide for ADR enthusiasts and wishing you all the very best of luck for the company.